A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So in this week's video, what I'm gonna do is try and print something as big as this from my phone. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So as everyone knows, I'm a landscape photographer and I love printing. You've probably seen from my videos in the past that I've printed off loads of photos when I've gone and out into the outdoors and taking shots. My favorite part of it isn't the editing part, but actually printing it and seeing that final image. And I also like phones. So I, I like taking photos on my phone as well. I like just the simplicity of it. That, ability just to connect to nature really, really easily. I use my phone for finding compositions all the time, but I've also, as I'll show you later, taken quite a lot of photos that I'm really pleased with on my phone as well. And I've always wondered what would it be like if I printed one of my phone photos really big, and when I want to say really big, on this printer. So this is my Pro 2100. So this prints um, in fact, we've got some roll paper here. So it prints 24 inches wide. So this is a, a box of roll paper that goes in this and it prints this wide. So effectively, I can print the shortest length on it is 24 inches. So I could print something like a 30 by 24 inch print. So I thought, let's give it a go. And what made me think it might be okay is that I printed some of my drone shots and you really can't tell the difference between my drone shots and, and shots taken on, on my Nikon cameras. Now, okay, my drone shots usually are panos, so obviously they've got more megapixels and they look better. The drone sensor is gonna be a little bit better than what I've got in my phone, which is a 12 megapixel, really tiny sensor. And I've got this printer because I had a demand for people that wanted bigger prints. They wanted something a little bit bigger than the A2. Actually, just let me get an A2 print and show you how big that is. Okay, so this is, this is printed on an A2 sheet of paper. This is what I usually um, printed. Obviously this has got a, quite a big white border. Usually I, I've got a thinner white border than that, but that's an A2 bit, bit of paper. And that's what I could print on this printer here, which was my Canon P1000. But people wanted bigger than that. So what this um, printer allows me to do is print that and, and have the paper coming out like that. So that is the shortest um, dimension of the paper. I've also been printing for a long time, for about 20 years digitally, and before that I, I did a lot of stuff in the darkroom. And over those 20 years, my rule of thumb has always been to print at 240 dots per inch. So basically pixels per inch. So if you take an image from a phone, any phone, they're all about the same, they're all usually 12 megapixels, then that will equate to 4 thousand pixels on the long edge, 3,000 on the short edge. So 4,000 divided by 240 is around about 16 inches. So printing at 240 DPI, I should, in theory, be able to print a 16 inch wide print. Now that's obviously on the longest edge and what we're talking about here is 30 inches on the longest edge, which is gonna to equate to something about 120 DPI. Now when you see posters up on the wall, they, they can sometimes go down to 72 DPI. So I'm hoping when you stand a little bit further away from it, it won't matter. So what we'll do is we'll look at some photos that I've taken, we'll choose some photos to print on this, and I'll probably print two photos big from my iPhone, and I'll print some photos as well from my Nikon Z7, and probably some photos also from my drone, and we can have a look at them all and decide what, what we think of them. I've never done this before, it's a first for me, so I don't know what it's gonna look like, but I'm super intrigued. Okay, so before we print anything, let me just show you some of the photos that I've been looking at that I've taken over the sort of last six months with um, my iPhone 11 Pro and my Google Pixel. It doesn't really matter which of those two cameras it is. I'm not gonna to go too much into, into the technology of the phones. They're amazing cameras, both of them. Um, and they both produce uh, you know, amazing, amazing photos. So, Here's, some, here's the photos that I took, and I'm, I'm going to tell you which ones I'm going to print and which ones I'm, I'm not. I'm going to start on this printer as well, printing just an A2. First of all, we can have a look at that, and then we can go on to the beast behind me. So, so all, most of these photos I took when I was trying to find compositions with my phone um, before I got my other camera out. Uh, but obviously they've turned out good because they end up being photos that I, I, I've, I've liked. 
So this was a, a, a photo I took last summer in the Lake District. I think it'll look good printed. Um, you know, it's it's got a lot of detail in it. Um, and because it's well lit, then obviously then there's very little noise in it. So, so I think that's a good candidate. This is another good candidate as well. Um, I'm inter interested how it deals with the sky graduation, so another good one. Um, and this was really low light, so this is an interesting one because it slightly increased the ISO when it took this. Uh, it was taking 1 25th of a second, but super low light. I, I took this, it was almost dark, so I'm so impressed with this. Again, this one I think would be good. There's lots of textures in it. It's quite bright when I took it, so it'll, it'll work well. This one, not so good um, because I've had to crop it a little bit and I don't want any that I've had to crop too much because um, obviously I want as many megapixels as I can. Again, I don't think this quite works because it's got a little bit of noise if I look close um, down here. There's quite a lot of dark areas in it. And I think it'll look okay, but not my favorite image. Now this one I'm really interested in that and I should probably say that some of these are taken as JPEG and some of them are taken as RAW. I tend to, certainly when I'm shooting with my iPhone, shoot just with the camera app on JPEG because I find that in the camera app you get a lot more of the um, artificial intelligence built into the phone and the stabilization and when you move into using Lightroom and the RAW, although you get better quality images, you don't get advantage of that AI. So you're trading one thing off for the other. So um, that's why this is a JPEG, but it's still a great shot. Now, I would say as well, when I print these images, that I'm reducing the sharpening that's automatically applied to the JPEG images, because the sharpening is just a little bit too too much. So that's I'm doing that afterwards, um, after it's been brought into Lightroom. So that might have a degradation on the, on the image, but we'll see. This one I think would work really well. This one's a bit, it was a bit too dark when I took it. It was way before dawn, so I just think it was a quarter of a second this, taking ISO um, 1250 on my, uh, on my iPhone. I mean, it's pretty amazing that it's actually come out. Um, you know, you look at it, it's pretty amazing because it's, it's using the AI again, but there's a lot of noise in the sky and I just don't think it'll look great printed big. I think this one would work printed big. This one's one of my favorites and I think it'll look really, really good. And then this one is probably the one that I'm most excited about because I've also got this almost exact image already printed big. So, you know, I, I, I can compare it like for like. So there are the images. I think I'm gonna start with printing this one in A2 on here and I'll probably also print this one in A2. So let's start with that. So to do the print, what I do is go into the print module. I'm gonna to go to my page setup and I'm printing on the Canon Pro 1000 series A2 borderless. So that's good. And then I'm gonna to go to printer and then it'll probably all be okay this. I just need to check the quality of media. It's matte paper, manual feed, because um, I'm using the Photospeed NSD Bright White, which is my favorite paper. Let's go. Time goes by, yeah, you and I are running out, running out. Time goes by, I change my Okay, so these looked really good when I printed them off um, in A2. I'm actually blown away just by how good the quality of them is. So we'll look at them in a little bit more detail when we, 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 we sit down in the other room and lay all the prints out. The next thing is to print one out on the beast behind me. And the first one that I'm gonna print out is this one here. Now, I was just looking at it again. I think I'm just gonna darken the sky just a little bit. And because there's a little bit of noise in there, I'm just gonna just get rid of some of that noise as well. I'm not bothered about obviously the sky being sharp. I just want the tones to be, to be nice in that sky. So that looks good. I'm gonna print that one first, and then depending on how that comes out, we'll maybe print another one, and then we'll go and have a look at all of them laid out together. So would you stay for a minute so I can be brave, let me care. 
catch my breath. Okay, it's printed out. It looked pretty good from afar, which is the main thing really. I mean, you're going to look at this from, from a distance. But this is my first look at a print shot on my phone, printed fairly huge. So here goes, oh, wow. That looks pretty impressive. It's definitely better in the center than it is at the edges, but that is pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do now is take it in the other room and we can have a full examination of all the prints that I've done. So I've printed quite a few out. I got a little bit carried away in the end and I'm gonna start with the smaller ones. I printed one out at A4 and a little bit of different paper and go to the bigger ones. I have to say, it's such a surprise. So first of all, this is A3. This is, this is taken with the Google Pixel and it looks amazing. Um, you can see here it's just fantastic. I, I, what, what I've noticed is that the phone shots are always over sharpened. So um, that's one thing that you can't really change so much if you're using just a standard camera. Obviously, if you take it in RAW, you can control all that, but then you miss out on all the um, AI um, intelligence within the camera. But this, I mean, I'd just be so happy with, with that. So that's pretty impressive. So this is another Google Pixel one. This is A2 now. This is, this is the one that I think blew my mind more than any, any other. Um, it is so good. I mean, I actually like the photo as well. And I, I think my, my phone photo is better than my big camera photo. Um, and, and because obviously it's such a small sensor, everything's sharp. So right from the rock down here all the way through, the colors are amazing. It's kept the highlights up here. The graduation of tones in the blues up here is really good. Um, you know, it's sharp. It's just so good. Love that. Um, absolutely amazed. This is one with my iPhone 7 in Lofoten. Again, I'm just so impressed. What I'm really impressed at is the graduation of tones here, the sharpness here. There's a little bit of softness here. This was just taken with a standard lens on, on the iPhone. Um, and what I noticed is that there's a bit of softness just at the corners. But again, you sort of expect that. I, I'd be more than happy to sell this as a print. It looks spectacular. I've got more, more information about that. I'm gonna be selling some of these iPhone prints, um, just one-offs, um, just these ones here that I'm, I'm showing to try and raise some more money for, to fight COVID-19. Um, so this is another one with my iPhone 11, which is so, so incredible. I really like this. This, this was obviously in, in the winter when we had some frost you're probably lacking a tiny bit of sharpness, you know, because we are getting to the maximum size you can print a 12 megapixel image, but it's the graduations of tones and the shadow detail that I'm so impressed with. So that's pretty good. And again, this one, amazing. Now, one thing I did notice on this one, um, this was taken with the wide angle lens on my iPhone 11. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit softer in the corners, but, but there's, it's not so good at dealing with the highlights. Again, I've just used, this is a JPEG image straight out of, of camera, and this hasn't been edited at all. No edits on it. So, again, blows my mind. Um, it's, it's, it's so, so good. Okay, now on to the, the, the big print. So I printed one big one, um, which is this one, next one I'm gonna show you. And I have to say, I was just blown away by it. Now there's lots of deficiencies which I can talk about, but when you stand about a meter and a half, two meters away, you cannot tell a difference. So I'll, I'll, I'll get both of them out. This is one of them. This is the other. Um, you know, it's gonna be difficult to see them both together. So I'm just gonna put them like that. So now, what do you think, left or right? Which is which is the which is the big camera? Which is the iPhone? Well, I'll let, I'll let you think about it for a second, and I'll tell you. So, this is the iPhone. This is the big camera. If you get really close, you can definitely tell the difference. Less so in the middle than at the edges. Right at the edges. So, if I just get the this one here, right at the edges of the iPhone picture. Um, up here and down here, 
it does go very soft. And I think that's probably just what they're trying to do with such a fisheye lens. It's the optics that are, that are causing the issue there. Again, just on this side, it's soft. But on a landscape shot, you don't really, it doesn't really matter sometimes, especially in the clouds if that's soft. So if you thought about it, it wouldn't matter. Again, I'd be happy putting this on my wall. And when you put stand um, a meter away, I'm looking at it really close here, but when you stand a meter away, it just looks absolutely amazing. So there, there, there they are, I'm blown away. You can definitely print iPhone photos big and they look really good. You could definitely put something this big on your wall. This is about, um, it's about 40 inches long. So I've printed out some other photos as well and I wanted to show you these. So these are some photos that um, I'm now gonna be offering, um, I, I finally, with, with the time that I've got stuck inside, I finally got around to building a page on my site just for these bigger um, images. And what I'm gonna do, so this is, this is one of them, what I'm gonna do is launch those today. Um, you can go on my site and there's going to be 30% off um, these. So on my site, you'll find the iPhone photos um, printed. Um, they're just one-offs and I'm also going to add these on as well. So these are prints that, um, that I'm going to start selling. So this is one of them, um, the Dancing Oaks image, which just looks so, so good. Uh, this is another one, which is one of my favorite places in the Lake District and printed at this size just looks fabulous. I really like the that the, the just missed here and now it's just revealing um, this boat shed here and the, the layers that are brought together. But what's what so good big is just the detail that you can see in all the trees just looks so amazing. So I'm gonna be selling that and I'll show you another one. And then I'm also gonna be selling this one as well, which is about a meter long so it's a fairly big print so it's about a meter long and this is actually um, a pano um, that I, I stitched with my Z7 so you can even print it bigger than this um, but this is as big as I can print it on my, on my printer it is phenomenal the detail in this print and it just looks amazing this was actually the print that was printed at the photography exhibition and I think they printed it four meters on the Benro stand it looked amazing so I'll be adding all these to my website. Go and take a look. The link's in, in, the, in, in the description. And speaking about websites, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And as you all know by now, they're, they're a massive supporter of this channel. And without Squarespace, I wouldn't be able to do all these videos. It's really helpful for me. But more important than that, they make it super easy for me to do these things to my website. And they also made it easy to build the World Landscape Photographer website. I did that on Squarespace. Squarespace were really kind and donated that website um, so, so, so I didn't have to take any of the funds that I'm, I'm raising um, and spend them on website hosting. So that was fantastic as well. If you're looking for a website, you can go to squarespace.com and have a free trial. And then if you're happy with your trial, you can get 10% off at forward slash Nigel or offer code Nigel. So that's it. Thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, I'm not going to do a midweek video this week because I've got to do a lot of stuff to do with my book. Um, so until next Sunday, bye. <laughs>